files that are on the TGA website that show they're called Agilent files with the RNA. So they're they're printout and they measure uh, the RNA and any fragments that are in a vial. And say they go through this mechanism of the system where it prints it out on a computer. And if, if you can imagine like a graph that would have a, a peak, like a bell curve, but a, mm. a skinny peak mm. on this printout from what's called an Agilent. It's a fragment analyzer. When they looked at the batches, and again, they're right on your website and publicly, you can go look. Uh, there should only be one peak, and that would represent one full piece of RNA that is meant to be expressed in our cells in our body and produce one protein, and that's it. Your files are showing other fragments in there that don't belong. Other mRNA co- snippets of code? Yes. To be clear, is is that such a like is is that such a sin in the sense that it, it really is supposed to only be one single mRNA without others polluting the the batch? So the the European Union on their public release they discussed this and said yes we are aware that there are fragments of unknown RNA floating around. But we think that they're harmless without mm. I'm paraphrasing here and that the body would just launch an antibody response. If those are what are called microRNA, uh, microRNA can be oncomeres. They're oncogenic. They cause mm. They can misfold. And then we don't even know what was going on beyond the lipids in there because they were labeled as an excipient mm. and not an active pharmaceutical. Mm. So in, uh, at least for the United States, the agreement with the FDA is that they didn't have to uh, list things about it because it was listed as effectively an inactive ing- ingredient. So we don't know what's going on in the lipid part of that, but we do know that there is correlation between the files that show multiple fragments that don't belong and the batches where people died. And I'm so, and I just want to say, Matt, um, researching this stuff uh, can be really difficult. And even though we're talking really matter of fact, like I have cried, like I was reading. Uh, and the reports that are on your site, there's a 10-year-old and uh, a 7-year-old, I think, died on the same batch within a uh, one- or two-month period. And then I have to to ask, why did the hospital staff keep jabbing off the same batch? So am I correct in thinking that if it was truly, uh, you know, randomized and uh, exceedingly rare, we should see these adverse events distributed more evenly, but the fact that we're seeing certain batches with higher rates of adverse events is very strong evidence of what you've been saying, just very poor, either cold chain or manufacturing, but you have these batches floating around out there. Correct. And we have that in the United States. There's uh, someone I talked to who used to work for the military intelligence, and he's been making charts and he's tracked. There are about six or seven areas, including the state that I live in, the United States, that have an extraordinarily high number of death and injury compared to other areas. 